Hello, Anime Nyan here, and today we're going to be doing a web development tutorial. So I'm going to be teaching you how to set up a development environment for Magento 2.6 on your Windows computer uh, through WSL2. Okay, so we're going to be creating this website here. Well, not creating this website, but this development environment for this website on Magento e-commerce. And you can see here that we have all this stuff here. So we have products and this is just sample data, okay? So I haven't done any coding whatsoever. And we're just gonna be creating this final product here. You can see how you can switch products. You can change the color. Uh, you can change between different categories of products. Um, there's also like customer logins. They can create accounts. The customers can create accounts. And even better is we can just go to the back end here by just switching to back end. And it actually has, if you log out, it has two-factor authentication through the Google Authenticator app. And I'm gonna be teaching you how to set all of that up, right? So just before even all of that, what is Magento? So Magento is an open source e-commerce platform that's written in PHP. So you can really customize this as much as, as you like to your liking, right? And it has integrations with uh, payment, common payment gateways such as PayPal, Braintree, and other payment gateways. That's why it's so good because it has pre-built classes just for e-commerce, as you can see there, because that was just the base product and you can pretty much customize it to your liking. Also, there is a NSFW Blender Discord in the description below, uh, which is where I mainly hang out. So if you have any questions about setting this process up or any problems whatsoever, I will be more than happy to guide you through, uh, through this process through voice chat. Just ping me or even just message me here because I'm just right here. I'm right here, okay? So just go to the link in the descri description below. Why would you use my, uh, Magento e-commerce when there's WordPress, there's Shopify, and there's other things? This is because it's customizable. Um, so yes, you do need to code, but the reason you code is because you can customize it exactly to your needs and create exactly what you want rather than Shopify or WordPress where you need to buy like a ton of plugins and then it still doesn't get what you want. Let's get started. So what do we need here to uh, for the prerequisites? So the first thing that we need to download is we need to download Docker for Windows. Okay, so just search up Docker for Windows in Google and just click on this first link here. Okay, and basically you can just just click on that first link there and you can just download and you'll have to download this and then uh, just run this setup for Docker for Windows. Um, and I won't do that whole thing because I've done it already and I'll just show you what it looks like. So you'll have Docker desktop for Windows, right? You'll have this window right here, okay? So uh, I think, I'm not 100% sure if you need a restart or anything, but basically you'll start this up and then it'll take a good 10 minutes to really start the, the container thing. And yeah, then it, this one will all be done. Okay, so just a really important note, if you're using, uh, just to check how this is working, so if you just go to your command prompt, so you just tap your Windows key here first, so tap your Windows key, and then you go to command, and you just command prompt here. To check if this is working, first of all, make sure that Docker is running, right? So make sure that you've got this window out here. Uh, you can also check, it should be in your sidebar right here. So if you just open up this uh, cross, uh, this um, icon here, you should be able to see this whale white icon there. Okay, so one way you can check if this is working is you can just try to use Docker. So if you try, try to use this Docker command, you should receive this instead of like uh, un, uh, unknown, what is Docker, unknown file or something. So you should see that that tells you that Docker has been installed correctly. Okay, cool. So that's for running Docker commands. Next thing, we need to install WSL2. Okay, so WSL2 is basically, it's uh, just Windows subsystem for Linux. We're installing a virtual machine for Linux on our PC, um, on our Windows computer. And you might be like, hey, why don't you just install Magento on the actual just computer, right? On your Windows computer, because it's really, really annoying. I've tried it. I spent several days trying to install it. It never worked, okay? So please just use Windows subsystem for Linux and try to install all the requirements like open search and all those other things. Like it's not worth it. Just use WSL2 as a uh, use a Linux uh, virtual machine. Okay, so just click on this first link here. And what we need to do here is we just need to go into PowerShell, right? Tap the Windows key 
and type in PowerShell, right click on this icon here, run as administrator, okay? Otherwise this will not work. So yeah, you need to say yes here. So just in this command here, just copy this thing here. So just highlight this command here, or you can just press this copy button. And you wanna just right click in your terminal. Oh, come on, sometimes this does not work. Um, I'm gonna right click in my terminal and you can see it's there, right? So you can just you can press enter, and then I think you need to restart your entire computer from what I remember. Um, I'm not gonna do it because I've already installed this. Uh, but once you've restarted your entire computer, you should see that you can just tap your Windows key and type in Ubuntu and pretty much just press enter, right? Just press enter and then you'll see that you have now installed Linux Ubuntu um, with an Ubuntu operating system uh, on your computer, which is great. Okay, so now that satisfies the initial requirements. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to go and search for uh, Warden. Okay, so what is Warden? Warden is basically a environment pre-setup. Like, so it will set up like a container which already has Composer, it has a lot of the other things installed in, into it. So it's really, really easy for us to install Magento on it. Okay, so you wanna go to this documentation here for Warden, and it's very, very popular for installing uh, Magento. Okay, so basically what you wanna do is, you can see here we just needed Docker Desktop, and we needed Docker for Linux, okay? Okay, so now we need to install Warden, right? So we're just going to click, uh, tap on our Windows key, and type in Ubuntu. Okay, so from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, find this page here. So basically, if you just scroll down here, it says Warden may be installed via Homebrew on both Mac OS and Linux hosts, All right? So what we can do here is we can just click on this here, and then I can just copy this command here by clicking on that clipboard and just run it here, okay? So in our Ubuntu terminal, All right? And we'll just press enter, and I'll just type in my pseudo password. Uh, Oops, wait, sorry. Yep, yeah, and you can see that we're installing Homebrew here, right? Yep, yeah, so we've installed Homebrew correctly. So uh, now what we can do is we can just go back to the, wait, where is it? We just go back to this here, now we can run this command here. So we can brew install uh, warden env and warden, right? So we can just install that through homebrew now. Okay, so you can see that I've already installed it, so I'm not gonna do it again, uh, but you will have to install it. Like, so it will, it will just install for you, okay? So the next step that we need to do is we need to go uh, warden service up, okay? So just copy this command here and just paste it by right clicking. Okay, so what is going on? Let me just copy it again. So I'll just highlight that, control C, and I'll just uh, right click here to paste it into terminal. And I'll just go enter. And you can see that it will start up the service for Warden. Okay, next. Uh, so we've done all this. Yeah, we don't need to do the alternative installation. So what we can do now is, yeah, we don't even need this here. But there is something very important here that I did actually make a comment on the GitHub, on GitHub issues about. But basically, you need to uh, configure, wait here, where is it? You need to have your DNS entries resolve from your Windows hosts file, okay? So this is kind of confusing. You're like, how do I do this, right? But actually, uh, thank you so much to Hardy Johnson and Navar uh, on GitHub who have helped me out with this because they showed me exactly what to, put in my Windows host file. So just for those who don't know, the Windows host file uh, is at this location, which I completely forget every time. Here it is. Okay, so basically what we need to do is I'm just going to use Notepad++ for this. So you can install Notepad++, it's free if you want. Uh, I really like it, but up to you, you don't have to. But you can just click into here and just download and install it, up to you. But anyway, uh, I'm just gonna click on my Windows key and you can use Notepad or Notepad++. And I'm gonna right click on Notepad++, run as administrator and go yes, okay? So I'm just gonna pretend I didn't open up that host file. So I'll just go file, open, okay? So I'll go file, open. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna navigate to this folder here, okay? So let's do it again, okay? So I'll just go C, 
and I'll go to my Windows folder. I'll go to System32. Oh my, if I can find it. System32, here you are. And then Drivers, right? So I'm looking for Drivers. I have the Drivers folder there. And then we're looking for the folder called uh, ETC, okay? I think it was just above there. I don't know why I missed that. It was right here. So I'm gonna go to the ETC folder. I'm gonna open up this hosts file here, okay? So I'm gonna open this up. And what I'm gonna put in there is this here, okay? I'm just gonna copy, I'm gonna put this thing here, like right here, okay? So this whole thing here, so for traffic warden uh, dot test, portainer warden dot test, I'll just make it bigger for you. So just this part here. Just with these entries into the hosts file, I will just post them down in the video description below so you can just copy and paste them easily into your host's file. Okay, so just copy this as your first DNS resolution kind of thing. So whenever it sees this DNS name or this domain name, it's gonna translate it into 127.0.0.1. And if I'm not mistaken, that's just the local host uh, IP address. So it's kind of gonna just know that it's gonna go back on itself. Okay, so same thing with the Portainer, DNS mask, mail hog. And then this will be just the name of your project. Okay, so I've already decided that my project would be named backsub.test, but later I can later on I can change this because I'm probably gonna make this backsub2 or something um, just because. Okay, so uh, yes. So basically just make just change this part here to whatever name. So if you want to name this example project dot test, that's fine, or potato, whatever you want to call your website, but yeah, just your project. So I'm just gonna call it backsub for the moment, okay? So make sure you have these five entries in your host file, okay, and save it. We can only save it because we are running Notepad++ as administrator right now. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to save it. Okay, so we've done that, that's cool and all. Uh, so we've finished this warden installation now, okay? So now we wanna move on to, uh, we wanna move on to installing uh, warden install Magento. Okay, so what we wanna do now is we wanna install Magento, right? So I'm just gonna click on this documentation here. And what I'm gonna find is I'm gonna look for uh, warden service up. Yep, okay, so yes. Okay, so yeah, we're just gonna do this here. So we're just going, just going to copy these commands from here. So basically you can just copy this command here. I like to use sublime text uh, because I just like it, because it's, it's, it's nice. You can use like Notepad++. I just like to store them first here, so then I can just change this to whatever I like. So let's just change this to uh, uh, YouTube demo. Okay, I don't know. We'll change it to YouTube demo this time, just because we can. Okay. And I'll just, yep. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go back into my Ubuntu terminal here, which was this one here. And I am just gonna close, let me just close that other Ubuntu terminal. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to run, run these two commands here, okay? So for those who aren't familiar uh, with the command line arguments and stuff, the command line stuff, what this does is it's make dir, right? So what does make dir mean, okay? So let's just take this apart. So let me actually just go back, let me go back into where we were. So right now we're in the home directory. Let me just go pwd to print the working directory. So pwd means it prints what folder we're in currently, right? So what we did here is make dir uh, dash p. Uh, basically here, the make dir is, is to make a folder directory, right? The dash p flag means that we're going to make every directory here if it didn't exist, right? So if we didn't have this sites folder, normally if you ran this command, like, it would not work, okay? So let me just run it without the p flag and let me just make a random other, like let me try to make this. And have a look, I can't create the directory because it's saying that sites sdf sdf is not a directory. So with the p command, with the p flag, it means that it's going to make any in-between folders, right? So, and what this, this tilde here, this tilde symbol just means home, right? So if I cd to home, you can see right now, the location we're at is the home directory. Okay, so this is the user, the current user's directory. Okay, so basically putting that all together, we make dir, we're making a directory, uh, 
and we're making even the in-between directory, the sites directory, and, the U and we're just making a folder called YouTube demo, right? So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna CD, okay? So if you CD into something, it's basically you're changing directory. So if I go CD um, sites, okay, so let me just do that, okay? So basically, it just ta takes me into the sites folder, okay? So if I just LS here, which means to list uh, files pretty much and list folders, you can see that I now have another folder inside here, right? I have the YouTube demo folder that I just created. So if I CD into YouTube demo, what do you think that's gonna happen? If I just, I just press tab to auto complete. So, and if I just LS here, you can see I have no folders inside here. Okay, so that's all it did. Okay, so it just basically uh, allowed you to create the folder and change directory into it. Okay, so the next thing that we did, uh, we need to copy is this command here. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it into sublime text again. So I'm gonna edit it first because this here, we're gonna init an environment file, okay, .env file uh, for Magento 2, okay? Based, because that's what Warden kind of does. And we're going to just change this to the name of our current thing, okay? So I'm just gonna change this to YouTube demo. Make sure you're consistent with this, okay? So if you have a different name, it's gonna error out, okay? So it's not gonna be nice, okay? So what we're gonna do is just press enter here and you'll see that nothing seems to happen, have happened. If I just press LS, Nothing happened, right? No, something did happen, but we just go ls-a, which means to find the hidden files. You can see there's a .env file there, right? Okay, so what we need to do from here is I'm just gonna use vim.env, okay? So I'm gonna use the vim editor and edit the .env file. So I'm just gonna press enter. So the most important thing here is we can see the traffic domain, okay? So here we see it's YouTube demo.test, okay? And here it's also YouTube demo, which is the name of the project file we named it before. The other important thing here to really check is if we just press the down arrow here, you can see that there's these versions of everything, right? So we can see there's open search version uh, and then there's node version, composer version, that stuff. Okay, so we really need to check this. Okay, so let's just go to Magento. Let's type in Magento system requirements. Okay, and I'm just gonna click on the link here, not this first link here, because I think this one's older or something, because it's 2022, but as of recording, we're looking at 21st June, 2023. Okay, and we're gonna scroll down here. I'm gonna change this to commerce on premises. And actually, this isn't quite right. I don't know what happened, because I think they've updated the documentation and it isn't quite right. But anyway, let's compare them, because that's what we should do. Um, so let's have a look here. Anyway, so we're trying to install Magento 2.4.6, as we can see here. So we need to just compare these two versions. So we can see that there's Composer, and there's also Composer here, which is 2.2. There's Elasticsearch, which is 8.4 or 7.17. There's actually not an Elasticsearch here. I don't know why, but yeah, there isn't. OpenSearch, we can see it is 2.5 and 10.6. I'm not gonna waste your time. I know that this is correct already, but this is what you need to do. Like, let's say that I wanted to install uh, Magento 2.4.5. Okay, let's make the adjustment settings and I'll show you exactly how you would do it. Uh, I'll revert these changes later, but I'll show you how I would do it. Okay, so first things first, if I just press try, try to start typing, I press J or JKL, you can see nothing's happening, right? So Vim, the text editor, you need to press I. Okay, so when you see, when I pressed I, it uh, entered insert mode right here. If I press escape, I can exit from insert mode if that makes sense. So I'm gonna press I to enter insert mode, and now you can see I can type, right? I can type any letters that I want. Okay, so right here, let's have a look here. So they're saying that that open search version must be 1.2 for this, right? So if I wanted to make that change, I would have to go 1.2, okay? And I'd have to do this to all of them, okay? Not just this one open search, I'd have to go down this whole list and compare all of them, okay? But if I wanted to save this here, what I can do is I can press escape and I can uh, use the colon here and do WQ. So what does WQ mean? So W means write, okay? And Q means, well, write means save and Q means quit, okay? So if I use, again, colon again, I need to use the colon, okay? If you don't add the colon, this is not gonna work and WQ, right? So you can see that I've saved the file there. But obviously we don't want those changes. So I'm gonna go vim and .env again. I'm gonna go inside there. I'm gonna change this to uh, 2.5 again, right? So I'm just gonna enter insert mode, because you can see when I tried to backspace there, nothing happened, backspace, nothing's happening. If I press I here, 
Then I enter insert mode down here, you can see at the very bottom, and then I can change this to 2.5, okay? And wait, is that correct? Yeah, 2.5 for 2.46, that's the version uh, that's happening. Okay, so what we can do now is I can just press escape and just go WQ. So we can change warden varnish to zero if we want, but in this case, I think we'll just leave it on. Um, but basically what we want to do is press escape um, and we can just, now, how do we exit this file? So this is a pretty common thing. Like if I'm just pressing the down arrow here just to scroll through the entire file. Um, but if I can't escape, escape the file, how can I do it? So you need to press the colon. You can see there's a colon that appears, right? So colon, and then you press Q. So Q means to quit. If I wanted to uh, write this file, or if I want to save this file, I would WQ. Okay, so that means write and save, or write and quit. Okay, so, and if I want to just have no changes and just quit the file, I, I would go Q dash, or Q exclamation mark. That means to quit and to override, because there'll be a warning message which will say, hey, you can't quit, you made some changes. Okay, so I'm just gonna go uh, Q in this case. Um, it said, okay, no write since the last change, so I'll just go, uh, press the colon again, make sure you always have one colon, you go Q, uh, exclamation mark. So that, that was just to check our environment file and it looks fine, okay? So next thing what we're gonna do is we're just going to, uh, uh, so that, yeah, that was the file that was created. Okay, we're gonna sign a certificate, okay? So let me put this into Sublime first and I'll change it first. So we wanna sign, of course, the same kind of thing, right? We wanna sign YouTube demo.test, right? So I'm just gonna copy this command here by pressing Control C and highlighting it and then I'm gonna put it into my terminal. I'm gonna right click and press enter. Okay, now you can see that I signed a new certificate, which is YouTube demo.test, okay, which is fantastic. So that's correct. Next thing, we're, we're gonna do this, okay. But before I do this, I'm just going to take my environment down because if I just go warden, warden uh, env uh, ps here, do I have anything up? I do, okay, so you can see I have my back sub website already on, right? So I want to take this down, right? So I'm just gonna go warden env, and I'm just gonna go warden env down, I'm gonna add the dash v flag. Okay, so this just means I'm just gonna take down my other environment because we wanna have another environment running. Okay, so warden env down, okay, so, and I'm using the dash v flag to delete volumes. Okay, so you can see right now that will just, well actually what? I deleted the YouTube thing, I don't know. Either way, that's okay, doesn't matter. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go warden env up, okay, just like they asked us to do in here. They told us to warden env up, okay? And you can see that it all works now, right? So what are we gonna do now? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go warden shell. So what does this do actually do? So before I just explain that, we have created a container here. We've created a container. Okay, called YouTube demo, just by going warden env up. So what is a container? A container, something that, that reuses the same kernel as the thing. So for example, if I had a Linux Ubuntu machine, in, in this case, like here, like this virtual machine here, and I run a container on it, this means that I'm using, I'm reusing the same Linux kernel. Okay, so I'm using the same Linux kernel and I'm just making a small sandbox, right? So on that specific application that I'm running. So basically this YouTube demo is running in a, in a completely blank space, right? And it cannot be, it cannot communicate outside of itself. It doesn't know of anything outside of itself. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go inside that container to have a look by using Warden Shell. Okay, I'm gonna press enter and it's gonna take me inside the container. And let, let's have a little play around right here. So let me just cd uh, dot dot, cd dot dot, and cd dot dot. Okay, so I'm gonna be in this uh, root directory here. It has its own uh, file system here. So you can see that it has like dev, home, all these directories here. We can currently see we're in the warden shell, right? So if we wanted to exit from the warden shell, we can do that at any time just by going exit, typing the exit command and press enter. So you can see I'm brought back to my uh, virtual machine right there. If I wanted to enter in Warden Shell again, I, I can just go enter in the container, 
execute inside by typing the warden shell command, press enter. And you can see I've entered the, the shell again. Okay, cool. <laughs> now this is funny. Okay, so, um, so let's just copy this command here and I'll put it into sublime text. Okay, so what you need to do here is you need to go to this website here, marketplace.magento.com. Okay, so when you go to marketplace.adobe.com and then you just go to sign in, right? Okay, so you'll have to create an account first. Okay, so this is a free account, but it's a little bit annoying. Oh, hello, what is going on? Okay, it's just signed me in, okay. It signed me in, okay. So basically, uh, you'll have to go back to marketplace.adobe.com again. And then you'll have to go uh, click on uh, your name and then just go to my profile. And then you can go to access keys. Okay, so you want to create a new access key. Okay, so you want to create a new access key here. Uh, you, can, you can see my access key already here. Um, I'm gonna delete this after the video is done, so it's okay, whatever. I'll show you my access key, it's not a problem. Uh, but normally, do not show this access key to anybody, okay? <laughs> Otherwise, they may have access to your, uh, to your uh, Magento website, other things, like other really, really bad things. Please do not show them the access key or like the, the public and private key, especially this private key. This public key can be shared, but this private key cannot, okay? So do not share it. Anyway, so let me just, uh, change this username here. So this username is actually just the public key there, okay? Same, this private key here is just the password. Okay, so just replace those two fields and now you are golden. Okay, so let's just, let's just do this. Okay, so let me go to my, back to my terminal and I'll run these two commands within, you can see that I'm still within the warden shell. Okay, I'm still within the warden shell here. Okay, so if you need, just run the warden shell again. Okay, I'm just gonna press enter and you can see that that's worked, okay, that's, that's good. So it's globally configured uh, my access key credentials. So if I just go, before, like, just to go back to the same folder, I'm just going to CD into uh, bar, I want to CD into www, I want to change directory into HTML. Okay, so I'm in here now, okay. Okay, so I'm in the basic folder. I don't think it actually makes a difference, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go back to the installation page again and I'm just going to select this entire thing here. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy this and I'm just going to put it into here. Okay, so we're just gonna edit this to make more sense for us. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, change this to 2.4.6, okay? Because we're trying to do Magento 2.4.6, okay? And next, we're just going to this doesn't actually matter because it's just gonna be an example project, but you know what, I'll change it anyway because I can, um, because, but basically what it's doing here is it's downloading the entire Magento repository and then it is from this GitHub link, okay? And then it's basically just copying it to the var www.html file, okay? Uh, folder, so let's just have a look here. So I just changed all this just to the YouTube demo, which is my project name, just being super consistent. And let us just copy this entire command here. Okay, yep. So now we're just gonna run that command there. So I'm just gonna go to uh, Sublime Text and I'm just going to install, use this command. This could take around 10 to 20 minutes. Okay, so just letting you know that this will take a very, very long time. So just wait for a while and just do something else in the meanwhile. Yeah, so just please be patient with this because it will look like it's doing nothing and it will just stay here at this very thing, but you can see that eventually it starts downloading the, the packages. Yep, so it's finished finally, which is great. So you can see that if I just press, if I go ls here, ls-a, uh, we don't have a git ignore file, even though we just pulled from that repository. Go to the official Magento link here for the git ignore uh, file. So it's in the GitHub. So what we're gonna do here is we can just, I'll put this link down in the description below so you can just click on it. And I'm just gonna copy the entire file contents here. Uh, press Control C 
and I'm just going to buy, so vim, I'm going to use vim and I'm going to start a .git ignore file. So I'm going to make a .git ignore file. I'm going to press I so I can enter insert mode. Remember, if you don't enter insert mode, it's not going to do anything, okay? So if you try to type or do anything, it won't paste or anything. So I'm gonna right click to paste my uh, contents of my file here. And just one thing here, I'm just gonna scroll up here because what I don't want here is I don't want my this config.php file here. So I'm just going to delete this one line here, okay? So again, I'm deleting this app.config.php, okay? To delete that line, leave this .env.php inside here. And I'm just going to press escape now. So you can see that I've exited insert mode. So now I can type the colon and W, which means uh, write, which means save your file and Q to exit your file. Okay, so if we just ls here, we can now see, or we ls-a, we can now see that we have a .git ignore file right here. Okay, so, and if I, if I cat its contents out, uh, you can see that we have this here without the, uh, without the config.php inside this. So this means whenever you uh, push this to a repository, uh, it's going to ignore all these files, which is correct, um, which is what you want to do for version control. Um, so what we need to do is now run this other command here, which is the bin magento setup install. Okay, so I'll just run this as well. And yeah, we'll just let it run as well. Yep, so you can see that's finished as well, which is great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to run these commands here. So I'm just going to run all these commands up to the set s developer, okay? So just including that, I uh, just run until there. Okay, so I'll just run these. And you can see they all work, which is great. Okay, so now we are just going to, just with this command here, I'm just going to disable uh, I'm just going to disable just the full page and not the um, not the block HTML. Okay, so and the final thing we're going to do just to make sure that this is to, that you always have to do with uh, Magento is just re-index and flush these two commands. Okay, so just run these two, and it will just do that. Okay, that's great. So what you should see now is first of all go to your Notepad plus plus and change this to the actual project name. Okay, I'm gonna change it to YouTube Demo, okay? Just because I can. Now, let's have a look here. So I'm just gonna go app.youtube.demo.test. And remember to save that host file, Control S, make sure you've saved it, otherwise um, this will not work, okay? So I just press Enter, and it's gonna tell you this SSL certificate is not valid, because it's self-signed. I tried adding the PEM, PEM key to this, to the browser, the Google Chrome, but it doesn't work. I don't know. Either way, doesn't matter. So we'll just press proceed, and just press proceed again. So advanced, hello please. Okay, so you should see that you have this page now, which is fantastic. Well, that's really, really great. Okay, so that's really good. Okay, so now you have this page, but you don't have the sample data, and you haven't configured two-factor authentication for one-time passwords. Okay, so as it says here, use of two-factor authentication is mandatory in 2.4.x, okay? And we're running 2.4.6, so it's definitely mandatory. So one question, just before we set up the two-factor authentication, I do know that there is Mark Hurst has, Mark Schust has made this Magento 2 mod module to disable two-factor authentication. Okay, so this doesn't work. <laughs> I tried it and it actually causes uh, 502 errors on Windows. Maybe it works for some version, but it totally doesn't work for me. So please do not, under any circumstances, use Magento 2 module disable two-factor auth authentication. This actually completely destroyed my system. I, I, I couldn't do it and I just kept trying to do it several, like four or five times and it did not work at all. So please do not use this package at all, at all, okay? Anyway, it's a good it's good practice anyway because for an actual production system you will want to set up two-factor authentication because um, You don't want hackers getting into your admin system and say like hacking your admin system and seeing all your Records like just completely in plain text because that will be very very bad for you. Okay, so please just set up two-factor authentication Okay, 
I suggest that you don't run this, these two commands here and you just create your own password and your own user, okay? Don't, don't use a random password. This is creating a random password for admin pass. And I really, really don't suggest that. So instead, what I suggest you do is you just run this here, okay? So I'll just create a user. And just to be aware, you have to have your admin user. Can you see it's the same as the email that you're gonna use? Okay, so let me just uh, use this again. So let me just uh, bin magento admin user create. I'll copy this command here. And I'll just go to my terminal. I'll run it. Okay, so here I'm just gonna put in uh, something that starts with my email. Remember, this needs to be the same as your email, okay? Otherwise, it's not gonna work, okay? Well, actually, I'll just put in another one. One that starts with my email, okay? So this username needs to be the, the start of your email, okay? 100%, please do not use a different thing because you can see here that admin user is the same as the email, okay? Otherwise, uh, it's not gonna work, okay? So um, let me just do that. And then you put in the admin password, okay? So I'll just make up a password. Okay, and if at any time, let's say that you failed this and you said, hey, that's not right. Um, so then just, just press Control C and just press Enter. And then you'll be able to go back to this menu. And you can run it again by just pressing the up key and just press Enter again. And I'll just do it again. Now, for example, if, you're, if you think the password, you accidentally typed it wrong, just you can Control C. Okay, so let's just type in the same thing. Make sure it's exactly the same as the admin user. Otherwise, this is gonna not be nice. Wait, oops. Uh, gmail.com okay and then let's put in my first name i'll just say lynn and then brooke cool okay so now that's done so what we can do now is we can just uh, use this kind of thing so we've created the admin user which is great so we finished all this one here right but what we need to do is we need to do this one now this is so annoying because this only works for Python 2.7. Okay, this here, right now for the current version, if you went to sudo apt install or sudo yum install on this uh, and install Python, it would be Python 3.9 like or something. And ever since Python 3.0, this does no longer works, okay? So I've got two solutions for you, but I really suggest that you follow my solution, okay? So one solution is if you wanna sudo yum install Python, you can just do that. You, you, it would default install the uh, Python 3.0. Uh, if that's the case, you can use this here, okay? So you can use this command. I'll put it in the description below. Um, yeah, you can just use this command here. Um, yeah, so you can use this command here and just put it into the description below. Okay, so, so I'll put it in the description below. You can copy it and you can use it, okay? Uh, however, what I suggest instead is to download Python 2.7. Okay, so what we're gonna do to do this is we're gonna go to CD and we're gonna go to the home directory by going to tilde, okay? So CD, tilde, tilde, right? And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to, um, I'm going to do what? I'm going to uh, make a dir, I'll just call this Python. Make dir Python. And then I'll just go into Python. So I'll just go, I'll cd into Python. Okay, so now I'm in this directory called Python, right? And I will actually download Python to this. Okay, so what, how can I do this? So basically I just search up Python, I go to downloads, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for Linux or Unix because this right here is a Linux, I think it's like a Linux, um, I can't remember, Debian I think, or something, I, I'm not really sure. But anyway, just go to Linux, Unix, and basically we need a version that's below 3.0, okay? And the closest version that I could find here was Python uh, 2.7, 2.7.15, whatever, it doesn't really matter. It just needs to be below 3.6, and we're not gonna be using this too much, it's just, it's just gonna be for this one function, so it really doesn't matter. Okay, so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm just going to, oh, I'm gonna click on this actually, and what I'm gonna do, so I clicked on the Python 2.7.15, and I'm just going to, right click on this gzipped tarball and I'm gonna go copy link, okay? And now I'm just going to put this into here, okay? So I'm just going to uh, wget just to download from this link, okay? So we're just wgetting from that link there 
you can just you can just ls here first. You can see what the file name is, right? So if you just go tar uh, dash xvzf and you go python and then you go tab tab to autocomplete, you press enter, it's gonna unzip it, right? So we just ls again and we see what we have. We now have a folder called python 2.7.15. So we're gonna go into it, so CD into Python, and I'm gonna press tab to autocomplete, go into it, and now run this. Okay, so we're gonna run this thing right here. Okay, so now we're in the folder. We can just run dot forward slash configure. And I'm gonna press enter, and you can see that it's going to do whatever it's doing. It's gonna configure the script. It's gonna take a bit, I'll just wait for it. Okay, cool. So it's finished configuring. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the build process. So I'm gonna go uh, sudo make out install. Okay, so I'm just gonna go sudo make out install. So you may have to prefix some of these commands with sudo, just letting you know, uh, like even the sudo make dir um, or sudo w get. Yeah, okay, it's finally done. So it took ages, but let's now actually the, do the sudo make install. And we'll just do that. Okay, so now that's done, we can go Python 2. Okay, and you can see that we have Python 2 because Python 2 now works, right? Because we, we just typed in Python 2. Otherwise, if you hadn't installed this, it would give you nothing. So what we can do now is we can go exit, type in exit and have the circle bracket and the circle brackets like there. Just, to, just press enter and then you'll exit back to the normal thing. So now we've created Python, we've installed Python, which is really nice. So let me just uh, go back to where we were. So I'll go CD into this, I'll go LS, I'll go, where, where, where were we? I completely forgot. Oh, no, we can exit, and then we can enter, we can just do warden shell, and it will, exit, it will put us in the right place, bar www.html, right? <laughs> just a lazy way of doing it, because I can't be bothered finding where we are. But anyway, so we're in the correct folder now, so now we can just actually go and install this, okay? I know this is kind of hard, but we'll just run this command here. Okay, so let me just, go here and I'll put it into here. And what we need to do is just change one thing, which is just the Python and just change it to two. Cause this script only works with Python two. It doesn't work with anything else. Okay. So if you used, if you used like sudo apt install or sudo yum install Python, you would have installed Python 3.9 or something, right? And this command does not work with that. Okay. Just letting you know. Okay. so. After you've changed this to say Python 2 here, Python 2, added a Python 2 into that, then you can use this command. Okay, so let me just run this command here. Okay, so you can see it ran successfully, which is great. And let's just uh, copy the rest of these commands here. So I'll copy the rest of these commands. Okay, I'll press enter. Okay, so that's not so good. Okay, I understand why this message is occurring. It's because we didn't set the, the, the variable admin user, okay? So we didn't set the uh, admin pass or admin user, okay? So basically we need to do this real quick. Okay, so let's, let's just set admin user equals, uh, 64. We don't need to use admin pass, so it doesn't really matter for that one because I don't want to exactly show my admin password on on uh, online, if you know what I mean. So let me just uh, echo admin user now, and you can see that we've echoed the value here, so which is good. So now what we can do is run these commands again. No wonder it wasn't working. Uh, let me just run all these commands again. In fact, I'll copy all of these and just put them straight into the terminal instead of messing around with it. And wait, oops, where am I? Okay, so I'm just gonna use the, the control and left left, left uh, arrow just to go back real quick. And I'll just change the one thing, which is the Python. I'll change it to Python 2. I don't think it matters if I only have installed Python, but I'm just gonna be really specific to make sure. Yeah, that finally worked, which is fantastic. Okay, so now what you can do here is you'll see that it, it gives you this link here, right? So if you just copy this and then you paste it here, and then you just go advanced, you just go oh, whatever, accept the risk. It'll give you this QR code, okay? So this, this QR code, you can scan with uh, your Google Authenticator, right? So you can basically just press the plus. So once you have the Google Authenticator app, 
you'll have to like authenticate with like an email or something I don't really know and with your with your phone or something once you first install it on your phone anyway after that just type in your Google Authenticator app and what I'm going to do here I'll show on the camera here uh, but basically uh, you can just press the plus icon here you go scan a QR code right and then you'll just scan this QR code here okay and it'll add it'll add a new uh, authenticator code right there you can see um, that it has that there and then that will be your two-factor authentication right it'll be pretty simple okay so yeah that's how to set up the authenticator part which was probably the hardest part of all in my opinion okay so now it's pretty simple right so all we need to do is just load this up with uh, sample data oh yeah here it is okay so it's bin magento sample data deploy okay so we, we just try this okay so bin magento sample data deploy right and this is gonna take quite a while so we're gonna have to wait a long bit yep okay so that's finally installed which is good so what we're gonna do now is we actually it, it'll tell you please run bin magento setup upgrades so we're just gonna copy this command straight there and just run it okay yeah so it's finally uh, done that so which is great let's just see and let's browse and you'll see that we will have set up our environment so let me just try this out so let me just go app dot YouTube demo dot test right yep and you can see now it's completely set up with demo data and you can go into here and we have the initial result that we were looking for right so we have the, the pink the purple we can go to different things here we have like so this is really really great for sample data because it shows you exactly how like you can use um, yeah how you can use stuff right how, how you can create a website from this, right? So the sample data is very, very useful and shows you exactly how you, you could create a website from this. So what I would do is I would just code as a template from here, right? You could now use PHP Storm or Visual Studio Code just to code. Because you've installed WSL and restarted, you'll see, you'll see there's Linux, Ubuntu, Home, right? And uh, let's go into here and we'll go into sites, we'll go into YouTube demo. Okay, so you see that you should be able to open this folder here with PHP Storm or whatever IDE you like, and then you'll be able to start coding from here and customizing this entire website. Um, yeah, so, and also, let's also sign in. Okay, so let me just go to the back end, kind of root. So we'll go to back end, to the admin. Yep, and let's just, do this okay and I'll just type in my password as well and then you can see that it has two-factor authentication set up so I actually do need to put in my code right here and you can see if this is correct it will re re redirect you to the thing uh, and I'll just say don't allow for accepting that and you can see that we now have this Magento 2.4.6 set up completely with sample data on your computer, on, on a Windows computer through WSL2. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Um, yeah. Honestly, I'm still doing the course by Swift Otter. Um, so, but I just think it's so cool that you can set up this and it's entirely free. Okay, so you can just set up this from scratch and it's entirely free. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for being here. You are my lifeblood, anime, nyan, out.